We see King Jack first hand in the big blinds. This will be a defend. Maybe he's going to go all in. Go on, shove it. <coughs> Pretty clear fold. So we'll be picking up on sizes. What kind of sizes you're going to use? What kind of hands you're going to three bet and stuff? Uh, I'm okay with this three bet. It's a little bit loose. So I wouldn't do this always. Um, and again, it's really useful having steel and fold to steel, fold to three bet, stuff like that. Uh, fold to three bet, eight percent. Again, it's over a pretty small sample. Two hundred seventy hands isn't really all that much, but. And we get four bet first hand. Lovely. Yep, just fold. No going all in. I'm also not. I mean, I feel like I'm. Alright, this will just do. So the sizing was fine as well. Um, going 10 big blinds versus a 2.5x. So we have the sizes here that Bluff the Spot recommends. So this is an anti game. So open raise should be two and a half big blinds, three big blinds from the button, and like three and a half from the small blind. Um, I think that you can get away with just going three in the small blind um, because people just fold, overfold a big blind anyway. So I don't think we need to um, go slightly bigger. But, oh shit, what have I done now? Hang on. Sorry, this was just annoying me. That was off, off screen. So yeah, so in an anti game, it recommends these sizes. Um, and I think that's fine. I think you can get away with, like I say, going three big blinds from the small blind because people generally overfold. Um, the button, three big blinds or two and a half is fine. I think there's not going to be that much, um, that much EV difference in two and a half and three big blinds or 2.2 and 2.5 big blinds. So even I still use two and a half big blinds in a non anti game. Um, but yeah, as long as you go in sort of like this is fine. So Ace Nine suited, I'm okay with the um, with the three bet. Again, you don't want to be doing this all the time, but if you think they open the button a lot and the fold to three bet is high, then I'm okay with it. Um, fold to three bet here, fifty percent. I'm okay with it. Um, again, it's nice having a steal um, a steal stat or at least button raise stat, and then you know you'll know what can what they're doing. The nines here, I think we should just three bet. So Bluff the Spot recommends a three bet or fold from the small blind. I can probably get behind a call, especially because he's not playing a full stack and he's probably a fun player. Um, meaning that we, it's kind of good. We want him in the pot because, you know, we're going to get more. But nines is, you know, I, I would just play three better fold from the small blind, even versus another gun. So I'm going to be folding out a lot of hands I might want to play. Hands like sixes, maybe even sevens. But nines is definitely stronger to three bats. So I would I would recommend three bet. I don't hate calling. I think it's kind of fine. Uh, I think it's kind of fine. Uh, but now we're already in like weird spots on these boards. It was like there was one with I think felt fire or somebody else where we didn't three. It was a VTR actually. We didn't three bat tens and we got a board like this and then we just didn't know what to do. So um, this isn't a board we want to lead out on from the small blind. If we're in the big blind, this is a board we could donk lead on. But I wouldn't recommend doing it anyway. Don donk leads are like quite specific. Um, so I would just generally never lead on any board. Um, but if we were in the big blind, this would be the kind of board we could lead on. And now we're in already a tough spot, right? Like we've got an overpair, but he's got the bigger overpairs. We, you know, if we call, we're not protecting our hand. If we raise, it's hard to get called by worse. So this is just a lot easier when you have the uh, the initiative. And again, this is a term we could sometimes lead on in the big blind, but in the small blind, we don't want it as much. And not really, you know, it's not really that relevant anyway. Um, yeah, check, check on the turn. He's going to check back a lot. And the river's kind of a weird one. On one hand, he's probably going to check his overpairs anyway, like tens through to aces. Maybe he wants the hero call with like a hand like ace king. I think we can go either way here. Um, I think we can go either way. So I don't mind check calling. Uh, I don't mind betting. Size wise, a third makes sense because of what you're trying to attack. Like maybe a hand like eight, so like ace five suited or ace king. But because everything missed, I don't mind betting a little bit bigger. I think all sizes make sense. I guess a bigger bet would only be like as a merge against players that are quite stationary. So yeah, I, I guess that um, something like this makes sense. So I'm okay with the sizing. It depends though, because when we're bluffing, we're always bluffing bigger. 
So, and this is one of the strongest hands that we're going to have, right? Because other than 7x, I mean, I guess we can have full houses as well. Alright, I'm okay with the sizing. Kind of a weird spot anyway. So I might go a little bit bigger. Just because it looks very valuey as well. We, we want to make it look a bit bluffier to get called by. Because we're targeting like Ace King and, you know, hands like Ace 5 suited, right? So, yeah. Alright, no, uh, no, no whaley mistakes so far. But this is a thing, guys. If you're making, if you can, you can send me a session like this and play really well in the session. If you're not playing very well throughout, then you know, there's no point. Just because you play well, like, just because you know how to play, doesn't mean that you always play that well. Aces on the button. Is there a better site? I'm not too sure. So again, 2.5x, absolutely fine. We can go 3x on the button if we want. We flop top set. Jack nine suited, yeah. Versus another gun, I definitely like the fold. Okay, so we, we, again, I don't want to go too much into post flop strategies. There's so many things we can do on this board with just our general range. Um, I think we mainly want to bet. This is a hand that when we do want to check back and have some traps, that we should have a hand like aces. So the two sort of main um, strategies, if you will, for c betting. Um, on boards where we have advantage like ace nine seven or like king six three stuff like that We want to be you can either see bet one third part with pretty much your entire range like every hand that you uh, raise pre-flop with or you could go a bit bigger and bet like three quarters part Or even part with a more polarized range. So, you know, we're going to be checking back some hands like kings queens uh, We're going to check like aces for example, but we're going to bet three quarters part with maybe hands like ten jack or 8-6 suited or, you know, ace-king, stuff like that. So if you're generally betting one-third with your entire range, then I like betting this, even though we have top set. If you take a lot of checks backs on this flop, then you should be betting bigger when you do bet. And I think this would uh, this would fall nicely into a check back range. So we have some, you know, strong hands. Uh, Ace-10 off suit there, definitely probably an open. Definitely probably. So on very aggressive tables, I can understand folding, um, but in middle position, ace 10 is definitely going to be an open. So we can see from the, um, even under the gun, it's borderline. But when we get to middle position, it is just a standard opening hand. Again, it is towards the bottom of the range, so we don't have to do it. Like if you know you're on aggressive tables, this is something you can use for here. So uh, obviously three bet is a good start and also like button three bet is a pretty good start or small blind three bet. So, or in position three bet. So then if you know that these guys are 3-betting a lot in position, seems unlikely, um, seeing as he looks like a fun player. But if you know they're 3-betting a lot in position, I, I could uh, maybe let it go. But yeah, this should be an open anyway. So like I say, if you know these guys are 3-betting a lot, maybe you could like exploit effectively and fold. Um, but yeah, ace-10 in that spot, definitely an open. All right, so we see bet with the aces. Turn comes an eight, which isn't the best turn card. Five, six, and 10 jack, and maybe a 10, six suited get there. Um, but we got top set. We want to put more money in the pot, right? So yeah, definitely want to bet. I don't think I would ever check this back on, on a board like this with just so many draws out there. Maybe we should every now and then, but even like just at low stakes again it comes down to the golden rule of poker when you get to lower stakes just when you've got good hands you mainly want to bet you don't need to trap especially on a board this wet we're gonna have a lot of bluffs naturally we're gonna have some 10x we're gonna have some diamonds so when we've got a lot of bluffs we're gonna need to balance that by value betting more often basically so i would never check this back i like the sizing as well could even go bigger to be honest um against fun players wait what's yellow is that red i don't know what yellow tag is Ace two suited, I like the, um, I would also just lay, name the labels as well. Even if you already know, I would still just, I know it's there on the bottom left, but. Oh, yellow is just no. I would still have, um, yeah, I would still have, n n name them where, instead of saying custom label, just name it just so, just so you're aware. And, and me as well. Oh, your computer never saves them, fair enough. So yeah, um, I like the ISO with the ace two suited versus a pretty obvious fun player. We can ISO so wide here just because there's dead money in the pot. Um, and I'm okay with the sizing on the left-hand side. Three quarters part, two thirds part. You could even bet part on that turn. I think either's fine. So why did you, like, are you not focused here? Why did you fold ace 10 under the gun plus one, but you're opening ace 10 under the gun? Was it because you already had aces on one table? Like, 
I don't think uh I think you need to just focus more on so that 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 says to me that you need to um that you need to just make sure you're aware of your pre-flop ranges so I would make sure I would just go and study pre-flop ranges to make sure you know what you should be opening this is a borderline open anyway but under the gun plus one it's like a, a, a standard open or a mandatory open so the fact that you've opened here but not on the other one where it wasn't like there's was a lot of regs behind whereas this it looks like there's more regs right like with the thingy so this is a much much worse like the button's got a fucking 17 percent three bet as well which is insane so this is i like i wouldn't open here especially when like this guy's three betting so much but i would have opened the ace 10 earlier so make sure that you're focusing um so you're not just autopilot folding or autopilot opening this i would consider a fold and the other one i would consider an open uh, King Queen suited in the small blind. I will be coming in for a squeeze here. Definitely coming in for a squeeze. So what sizing are we going to go here? Go for a pot sizing. I'm okay with this. I think you can maybe make it bigger. So out of position versus just an open, I'd want to make it like 11 big blinds at least anyway. So I think we can go bigger than this, 14 big blinds. I think we can probably go 15 or 16. Um, but it's okay. I mean, it's not like a huge error. As long as it's, as long as it's at least 13 and no bigger than, say, 17, you're not going to be making massive mistakes. Um, as a general rule, I'd say... So let's say we're just 3 betting heads up. I'd say go at least 4x out of position and at least 3x or about 3x in position. Um, obviously, when there's more, you could even add these numbers to it. So you could go 4x, which would be 10, and then you could add that and that. So that would be 15. So you could go $1.50 here just from that sort of, you know that uh, little formula alone but it's not terrible i'd like to see it maybe slightly bigger just because you're probably going to get called in one spot and if you get called in the first spot it shouldn't make too much difference to the ranges anyway but yeah definitely like a three bet i would say this is a mandatory three bet in those spots yeah it's annoying if somebody four bets and maybe you got a fold especially at lower stakes but this guy i don't think this guy is going to four bet bluff so i think yeah i like a three bet and we take it down which is nice a little bit of free money. Fives here versus a min open from this stack. I'm honestly just folding. Uh, we don't have good implied odds against him because he doesn't have enough. Maybe you can call if the big blind or the small blind are fun players. I mean, they seem relatively passive. It's not terrible, but like we just don't have much playability with this kind of hand. Like now what do we do? Now, what do we do when he bats? And what do we do when he checks? Do you know what I mean? It's just like such bad playability. Uh, okay with the check. Now I'd like to maybe see a third C bet. Uh, I'm also okay with checking back. And honestly, I think we can go for value in this river. I think we can go for value. Um, I know we've got fives and there's just so many overcards, but he just never has a better hand. And this is a thing as well. When you do win the hand, like we're not getting any value. We've just checked that to the river. I think on the river, we can go for a little bit of thin value. I know it seems super thin, and it is, but is he just going to check, check, check hands like eights or like a jack or like a seven? Maybe a seven, but there's not many opening. And yeah, he might not call the hand like ace, queen or ace, king, but I mean, he might as well try, right? So yeah, I prefer just a very small... Uh, the thing is as well, like we can just have some bluffs where we just check back to the river with, let's say, like, I don't know, just king high or queen high or something, and then we can just go, okay, we'll try, we'll try to take a, a stab, right? So if I'm in his position, for example, it checks to the river, and then he bets, I'm going to check call ace queen just without even, you know, thinking about it. Uh, so yeah, not really sure about that hand. I would have preferred just folding free, to be honest with you. Ace king, obvious open from under the gun plus one, middle position. And nines, easy open from the cutoff. Is there anything exciting in this, Chris? Like, any, like, major mistakes or anything? The thing is, I've seen some hands that you've played, you know, what you posted in the Discord or whatever. Queen 9 suited, a fine open from under the gun towards the bottom of the range. But again, it's got some playability, so it's fine. And we flop pretty well. I think we can check this back sometimes because this board is pretty good for the big blind. Um, so I think we can check this back in general. This hand makes a pretty good bet. Obviously, we block 8-9, uh, we have an open ender, and we don't have any showdown. Uh, so, at lower stakes, especially against passive players, I definitely want to bet. I'd prefer to see a bigger size in on this texture, just because 
All right, so we can bet a third on boards where we have like clear advantage on on dry boards like ace nine seven from earlier, king six four something like that. Something like this, it's a lot more wet. There's a lot better hands that we can probably have two sizings, but I prefer going bigger here where we're trying to represent, you know, a, a strong hand where. You know, on ace, nine, seven, we can bet a third and, you, you know, we can have some nine X, some seven X, sounds like kings, we can have aces. Um, whereas here, we want to, you know, represent that we have, you know, uh, ace, jack or better kind of thing. Um, so on this board section, I think I prefer going bigger. Um, seven on the turn, pretty bricky. I'm okay with betting here. I'm okay with checking. Checking means we get to realize our equity. Shouldn't really have too many seven X hands. Um... But you can have obviously Jack X and 10X. And on the Nine River, when he checks, I think we have a crystal clear check back. Our hand is too good to bluff, I would say. Um, we only really maybe get in 10X to fold. And obviously, it's way too weak to value that. So I think we have to check. And we beat the Ace Queen. <coughs> and I, I'm okay with this play. I wouldn't even hate seeing him check raise because you bet a third. So obviously, the, the smaller you bet size, the more that we want to be check raising as villain. Um, and we have a gut shot and we have, you know, uh, the queen of the queen of diamonds at uh, the queen of clubs, sorry So I wouldn't hate uh, even betting the turn and triple barrel in this by the way, just because we unblock um, The seven's probably technically better for us because he doesn't have many seven X So it just means that, you know, we still have advantage in the overpairs and sets and boats and stuff uh, I wouldn't hate triple barrel in this because we'd block eight nine the nine would um so let's say we bet the turn. I could I could bet the turn and then bomb the river because we block king queen. Um, we block some two pairs with the nine. We unblock clubs. So this would make an okay triple barrel. Um, yeah, I could see myself triple barrel on this sometime and like over betting the river or something, especially blocking king queen. Uh, but as played, absolutely fine. Checking about the turn as well. So we want to obviously bet the turn sometimes and check sometimes. But yeah, I'm okay with uh, I'm okay with it. Ace Queen, I uh, would definitely be three betting here. Raise the top pair. What a great note that is, Chris. Raise the top pair. Uh, Excellent. Was he the? Was it a three bet pair? Was he in the big blind and check raised? Did he check the flop to check raise? Was it a four bet pair? I'm not bothered about the spelling. I'm bothered about how shit the note is. Raise the top pair. Fucking hell. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Great information. Yeah. Now that you've seen that note, you're gonna know exactly how to exploit him. Dickhead. Get your shit together. So I can understand it if it's like, so you, you need to know the context of it, right? So like, was he, did he just call pre with like queen jack? And what was his kicker? Like, did he just call pre with like queen jack off and then raise on a jack two five versus a C bet? Or did it, was it like ace king queen and he raised a six, you know, in a three bet pot or something like that? Like, that is an absolutely useless note. Anyway, kings reopen, we get an A side board, obviously, because this is poker stars. Uh, I'm okay with c-betting here again. So if you're having the strategy of you bet a third with your entire range Then we can bet a third. I know it sucks that there's an ace on board But we can still get called by worse hands when we bet one third. That's the beauty of it uh, It does mean he's he should in theory be check raising a little more when we bet smaller um, But yeah, if we're going with the strategy where we're betting say two-thirds part or three-quarters part and checking and we're not having any small bets then yeah, definitely like checking, but it, I've seen that you like to bet a third in general with pretty much your range. So I'd still like to see a third C bet on this uh, on this on this flop. But I'm okay with the turn bets. Uh, definitely want to start getting putting some money in for value now. And he's got check fold clicked, so that is something that you can note. Because when somebody has check fold clicked, you can just give yourself an amazing price on a bluff by min betting. So it could be a three bet pot or whatever. And if he's got check fold clicked, you could have nothing and you can min bet um, the turn. And still get a fold the same as anything else. So definitely something you want to know, with guys. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm okay with the line. You can maybe even bet a bit bigger on the turn as well, because there's quite a lot you can get caught by, even though there's an ace on the board. So yeah, I'm okay with it. Four three off is going to be a fold regardless. Same with the nine four off. So the king queen here, um, I think we can three bet or fold. I wouldn't like calling here. Like I say, I advise not having a calling range from the small blind and just three bet or fold. So if we look at our small blind defense here, we can see what we want to be three betting. So we are against uh, middle position. So yeah, it's actually just a pure fold here. I'm okay with it here um, just because, well, it's lower stakes. A against a cutoff, it would probably be half and half is going to be my guess. 
yeah so half three bet half fold so it is a little bit loose maybe you just want to muck it against middle position which is another gun plus one um but i'm okay with it at lower stakes it's not like absolutely punty considering that it's fine versus the cutoff but yeah again this is one that is pretty marginal so just be careful when you're doing this you don't want to do it this guy seems like a reg um relatively aggressive i mean it's only 60 hands it does feel nitty to muck but this is a problem about having a this is the idea of having a three battle fold strategy that we're gonna fold some hands that would play okay as a call but rakes high at these stakes people fold over fold to three bets so yeah but like i say it's it is pretty marginal like don't is it like versus under the gun are you still doing this because versus under the gun it feels like well more it's not as nitty because he's gonna have a tighter range but i like the size in here as well 11 versus 2.7x and we flopped pretty well so this is just a board i am gonna see about my entire range on again for about one third pot just because it's so good uh, i wouldn't size up i mean you can size up here well, okay so why are you sizing up here that's what i want to know are you sizing up here because you're gonna bet your entire range well you're gonna have a polarized range here or are you sizing up here because it's a three bet pot because I used to size up in three bet parts, but you can size down in three bet parts. In four bet parts, you can size down even more because the, the SPR is going to be lower. So I would generally just bet a third with pretty much my entire ranger. Um, yeah, I wouldn't bet bigger because it's a three bet pot, especially out of position. Um, but I'm okay with betting larger on this flop because, because we have advantage. Um, we have more king X and ace king and stuff. The only problem is when you put king queen into this kind of into this bet we're not getting called by that much more for a big sizing right so let's say we three bet king nine suited randomly we wouldn't want to ever bet this big because we're just folding out a lot of hands that we beat we need them to have like ace 10 or like queen jack suited and stuff like that um and here we block queen jack so i'm okay just picking a smaller size here to get called by more with this specific hand again betting the third with your entire range is fine uh so felt firefox opens and we are three betting the jacks for sure this size in is absolutely fine. I would consider this perfect in an anti-game versus a 2.5x. <coughs> Cold call found a fish. Love it. So uh, I saw this guy in Felt Firefoxes. He seems like he's got reggae stats and plays a full stack, but he's definitely a fun player. He does some random shit. Uh, King Queen, I'm okay to carry on betting. I Again, because I bet that with my entire range on the flop, I tend to check a lot on the turn. Um, when we have strong hands and obviously sometimes when we have weak hands. So I'm okay just checking range on that turn or checking like a good amount of hands. Maybe hands like tens is like a really good bet because we unblock top pair. But here, you know, we, we block top pair, we block some of the draws we want him to have and stuff. So going on Quacky, how you doing? So I'm okay with checking this. Obviously betting is also fine. We have top pair with a second kicker. Nine ten suited, they're gonna be an open. Top set. This is what you love to see. Obviously, it's the three club board, but with this stack to pot ratio, if somebody has a flush, good luck to them. <laughs> this is just an amazing flop. Uh, obviously, our hand needs protection, and we want to um, bet for value. So I would say this is a mandatory bet with this hand. Ne never really want to be checking. Sizing is kind of weird in these kind of pots. I really don't know what sizing to pick. I think I think this is fine. Uh, the thing is, on this kind of board, like, so if we're in a heads-up pot, we're going to be betting a lot less frequently on this board, right? So we're going to be betting not as often because it's a three flush and we're going to want to have some traps and we're also going to want to have some hands that we check back. And when we do bet in a heads-up pot, we're going to bet smaller. We're going to bet, like, quarter pot. So in a three-way pot, it's interesting. I don't really, like, I think we can probably go a bigger size because we're really not going to bet this flop all that often. So I think we can probably go somewhere around half pot because we're only going to be betting at about 50% of the time, maybe even less. So maybe half pot makes sense, I don't know. It's pretty interesting. I'm okay with the size and I'll probably go a little bit bigger because we want to get value and protect. But yeah, 9, 10, 2, we get a lovely flop. Uh, again, we can bet third on a board like this or we can even bet bigger on this kind of board. And this hand actually goes pretty well as a bigger bet. Um, I'm okay with either as long as... Again, we can check this back sometimes as well, especially against regulars. But generally, again, it comes down to it. We've got uh, equity in the hand. We've got an open-ended straight draw, but we have no showdown. So we mainly want to bet. Uh, turns pretty horrible, and he leads. Honestly, I can get behind a fold. 
I don't really know what the lead is. He shouldn't lead on this turn. He can lead on some diamonds, like a six or a five of diamonds, but the king is still better for us. So I I'm okay with just folding. Uh, felt fire gets out of the way. We're against a fish. Now we just want to put money in and hope he doesn't have a flush. So I'm okay with sizing. What? So I would size here trying to get an SPR of one for the river to be able to shove. So if we bet $2.30 here, then there's going to be $8.00. Near enough nine dollars in the pot, and we're going to have like just under eleven behind. So I would bet bigger here, three dollars, because if we bet three dollars, the pot would then be ten thirty-five, and we'll have nine seven nine seventy-nine. So we'll have less than a pot size bet. So you want to size up on these boards to be able to shove the river, and you also want to do this as well when you're bluffing, if you're going to set up a river shove bluff. Like you just want to be doing it where the SPR is like one. So I'd bet bigger than this for sure. The turn's interesting. He shouldn't really have 8-9 suited because he should fold the flop. Uh, 10s is definitely a possible hand. 10s with a club. Um, but other than that, it really doesn't change a lot. So he could have a flush, but we were losing to that on the flop. But uh, but yeah. And he shoves and we just snap. I swear to God, if you fold, Chris, I will cry. Call quicker. So the thing is with this, we beat value, we beat bluffs. And we still have good equity against flushes, right? We're getting two to one. So we need 33% equity in the whole hand. And we just absolutely have that. Sometimes we have 98% equity here when he has like sevens or tens with no club. So call quicker, please, Chris. If you fold, I will cry. Good. He's got a flush. Good luck to him. See that though? We're getting two to one. We need 33% equity in the hand. We actually have 20% against a flush. So we're not, obviously we're not getting the right price, but we're not even that far off. If we'd have bet bigger as well, we'd probably be getting near enough the right price against a flush. So we're still going to, this is worst case scenario. We're still going to win one in five times, right? Um, so yeah, so one in five. So if we've got 20%, it's going to happen one in five times. Not often enough. And don't cash out because that's sloppy. That's a pretty sick part, by the way. So, yeah, it sucks. And obviously, he's a fish. Cold calling King 10 suited at the small blind is fucking terrible. And he just gets paid for it. So, that's just a cooler. Yeah, it feels sometimes when you, like, bet the turn, you're like, ah, oh, now it feels like he's got a flush. But just in general, for the amount of times he doesn't have flushes, that betting the turn is going to be so good that we don't want to check the turn to pot control, even, even like, on a three-club board. That we just want to bet it so just unlucky pretty sick call up uh king 10 here what has happened have we defended we've defended the big which is standard here i think we just check call don't really want to check raise doesn't really make too much sense to check raise but we could do it at low frequency i think it's fine the call was standard we're getting we're getting two to one like we beat sets like what if he's got pocket sevens and we fold it's disastrous So, king on the turn, uh, he bets half pot. I wouldn't even hate a check raise here. As long as we don't fold, it is fine. Um, oh, versus a whale, I might even check raise then. Just because against that size, and we're just going to... But yeah, most people call because they feel, oh, it's not, it's not the nuts, right? But we have three of a kind. We have a 10 blocker to queen 10. Obviously, against fun players... Uh, against regulars, we might just want to check call because we want to balance our range and they're going to fold a lot. But whales are going to call hands like ace jack. So, and they're going to check back a, a jack a lot. All right. So, ace queen, interesting one. Um, I think button versus the small blind, we have to V pip. So, folding is out of the question. And let's have a look at this. So, uh, it's not going to say uh, this won't have the ranges. Never mind. Because it won't have, uh, won't have what you should do versus three bets. So here, I would at least call... I would call most of the time um, and 4-bet some of the time. I like the 4-bet. I think it's a little bit too big in position. When it's 4-bets... So, like I said, 3-bets, three 3x three in position, 4x out of position. When it comes to a 4-bet, you want to, like, 3x out of position. And, like, you can even pretty much min-click it. You, you can even make this, like, $1.90. Um, I would never go more than 2.5x in position with a 4-bet. Um, so I think this is a little bit too big, but it's not absolutely terrible. Like 210 would be like my maximum, maybe 220 if you want to add that extra fold equity, if they peel a lot to 4-bets. 
But I, I'm okay with the four bet. Obviously, this is going to be a four bet fold. This is a, a four bet bluff. We don't want a four bet call off. So, uh, so yeah. And the King 10, against this half pot sizing, I actually like raising. Um, and I know a lot of people don't do it here, so. I like it. I like it very much. And if we get shoved on, we can just comfortably fold, unless we think he's just gonna. I don't think I've ever seen anyone three bet bluff a river at 10 and L. We take it down with the ace queen, so that's fine. Yeah, fucking. Yeah, we just have to fold. I know we've got good blockers, like we block houses, we block trips, we have trips, we block straights. I mean, if this is a bluff, it's fucking... Ugh, indeed. This is a problem. This is why people call a lot, because they don't want to face something like this. At the end of the day here, we, he has just basically 3 bat shoved for 150 big blinds effective on the river. I, I, I just, uh, I like the 3-bet with the ace-jack suit, by the way. I just fail. I, we have a good hand. We have blockers. I just fail. I just, I, 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 I couldn't believe anybody would bluff her at 10 and now in this spot. When we're repping such strength. Like, I couldn't believe anyone would bluff her. So, I, I think we just have to mock it. If he's bluffing, then fair enough. Yeah. We, we just have to mock it. Like... He's only really repping King Jack or like King Nine or maybe Jack. But like this, this is definitely a punt just because like he, he just he just always has it, man. Like this is definitely a punt. Um, so yeah, it's a cooler obviously, but and I like the check raise on the river versus his half pot sizing. And so I'd note him as well that he half pot um, flop turn and river with king jack on a king king jack nine three board because that's going to be useful information because then you know that against like you, you don't have to raise like this is a this is a, a pretty thin raise on the river anyway um so then you know that you know you, you can't just raise thin for value because because he's gonna bet hands like ace jack or queens like this or like maybe like a random king eight suited or something so yeah th th this river is just definitely a fold like if you're playing higher stakes even then, you just don't see a three bet river bluff for 150 big blinds. You just literally don't see it. Uh, I would literally only call. I would only call like King Niner, pocket nines, if I had pocket nines. Right, well, what am I folding now? I'm folding every king. I'm folding Queen 10. I'm folding, I'm folding nines. Uh, and we three bet jack, so we don't have jack. So I'm literally folding everything here apart from. King Jack and King Nine. Which I have, by the way. I have one combo of King Nine suited. And I have many combos of King Jack off suit, which we defend from the big line. So th this call is definitely a punt. Yeah, I think you've over leveled yourself there. You've gone, oh yeah, but he's a, he's aggressive. Like nobody, nobody, nobody. You find me somebody that three bet bluffs like that. That isn't a total lag tard, by the way, that just clicks buttons. <laughs> <clears throat> but that, that that's your own fault, Chris. Sorry. Don't three bet this King Jack on tilt. Good. Nice fault. Uh, so, yeah. Obviously a cooler. Obviously we're going to lose some chips. We don't need to lose 150 big blinds. Though. Slightly more. We don't, we don't need to lose that. Ace-9 is a open from the cutoff. That's fine. The Jack-3 suited. I think we can probably defend versus a button raise. Yeah, so we can defend all our suited Jacks versus button. Um... If you think they're a solid rag and they're going to have, you know, they're going to be better than you post lot, I'm okay with folding. Um, but yeah. But ace nine on this board, I'm okay with betting. Uh, again, this kind of board texture, I don't want to go a third size in with my entire range. So I would go, I would check back this flop a lot, but then when I do bet, I would bet bigger. So I'd bet like three quarters pot. Especially with this hand where we've got an open ender and we've got the ace of diamonds, which could be a really important card. Um, so yeah, I pre definitely prefer a bigger bat or a check back on this kind of texture. Um, turn is an ace. I think we can go either way on it. I, I actually don't mind batting just because there's still so much we can get called from that's worse. Um, maybe it's better when we don't have the ace of diamonds because then you can have the nut flush draw. But you're still going to call some king jack, queen jack, king ten, stuff like that. Uh, jack nine, eight nine suited, stuff like that. 
and you know it's one of them where it's going to be a two street hand anyway so we might as well get value from draws and protect our hand then check back and hope for a blank river like even now we have a tough spot on the river when we river two pair with the nut blocker so he checks and yeah i think we can go for value it's very thin but like how often is he going to have a queen and check how often is he going to have a flush and check the hand I'd be most worried about about check calling here is something like 7-8 or like 10-7 suited, jack-7 suited. And I don't think there's that many seven. So I'm okay with this. So if board is better for villain, we don't want third range. Exactly. If the board is better for villain, we want to check more often than we bet. And when we do bet, we want to bet a polarized range and basically say that we have a very good hand, you know, or, or some sort of strong draw. So on a board that's good for us, ace-2-7 rainbow, we can bet with quite a lot of shit because we're going to have well more like a massive advantage in uh the top pairs the high-end top pairs ace king ace green ace jack we're gonna have a big advantage in the second pairs so like kings queens and jacks um and then we still have the same set advantage uh we have sevens and we have deuces but we also have aces so we just have a huge advantage on boards like that whereas here he can have hands like queen nine off versus the cutoff whereas we don't so he um he has advantage in in the top end of the range but then we've got more sets like tens and jacks maybe he still has tens so yeah on a board that's better for villains range or at least good for villains range you don't want to bet third with range you want to check back a bit more and then when you do bet you generally want to be betting bigger than a third pot uh, but on this river i like this that you're going for value here it's a little bit thin but he's still going to call his two pairs he still might call and it's pretty much all we're attacking two pairs maybe he just stations king jack or something but having the ace of diamonds means we're not going to get check raised as often either. So you can still check raise flushes, but we block the nut flush. So I definitely like the bet. And if he does check raise, probably just fold. Also, I feel as though like I wasn't a whale. Just like with the one hand that he had, like his stats were in line. Uh, Queen Jack could have been an open on the left table, by the way. Uh, Queen eight. Uh, have we defended the big blind? I assume so. We flop trip queens. Easy life. So this will be a uh, pretty marginal defend. Yeah, we're, we're, we're towards the bottom of our range versus button, but definitely okay with it, especially if they're raising a lot. Again, if you feel as though they're going to just outrun your post flop, I'm okay with folding the bottom end of the range, as long as you're not folding, let's say, queen 10 plus. Uh, versus a third, I think we can go either way on this flop. We're going to want to have... So the, the, the smaller the bet in general, the more you want to be raising. So versus a third, I'd be raising a lot more. Versus, let's say, uh, three quarters part, I would just pretty much always fall. Ace queen, we got a nice squeeze spot. I would go a little bit bigger than this. But it doesn't matter, they're not playing full stack, so it's kind of okay, especially him. But I'd still go a little bit bigger, one, maybe one ten. Uh, check, check on the turn. We definitely want to bet this river. Uh, all sizings make sense. Um, seeing as all the draws missed and back doors missed, I think I go big here because I want to go big with my bluffs, right? So I'd be betting, you know, some bluffs like jack, jack eight, jack nine. Um, and if he has a hand like aces, kings or a 10, he's never going to fold. So the two thirds, I don't really like. I prefer going like three quarters and just getting that extra little bit of value. Because he's, he's going to call the same range, right? So like half part and three quarters part, maybe even part is going to call the same range. So I think we can go closer to part there um, and just get max value. So both of these standard opens. Ace two suited is not on the loose side. Um, it's definitely a standard open, but I can get behind folding here with ace two suited. I wouldn't hate folding, especially more aggressive tables. And we're in a spot here with king jack suited. So in general, in a heads up pot, we always want to V pip. I think this is actually a reasonable spot. Maybe not. He has 4% three bet. I'm honestly okay just letting this go, yeah. So generally, King Jack suited in position is going to be a pretty good hand. Um, it's going to be a pretty good hand, but we've got to play left to act, and the guy's got four percent three bet. So I could, I, I can get behind all three here. Like let, let's say we didn't know stats and we just thought he was aggressive. I can get behind a low frequency four bet, calling a lot, and then folding sometimes. It's kind of weird. It's one of them where I think everything's okay. Honestly, at these stakes versus a four percent three bet, I'm okay just folding. I would also click watch on fold here as well to see if we can get some information because when he's only got this percent three bet, we can then start labeling as potentially a, a very tight player if he shows up with aces. This flop here just sucks. I'm okay with him leading. Uh, I don't think it's a board you generally want to lead on. Lower boards, we can lead on more, but we have a slam dunk fold. He's just, he's just giving us the easy way out there. It's like, oh, do we see bet here? 
And the answer is probably no, but he's just given us the easy way out. I'm just going, oh, look, you can't see better. Like, good. Uh, so, A is definitely open. So, would you recommend to adjust BTS ranges for micros? Um, no, because I would say it's the same. You want to be V pipping less. Basically, you can three bet more. Um, I'd be folding the A7 suited here. Slow rolling dickhead, nice. Nice note. Um, yeah, I'd be folding the A7 suited. We can defend, but I think at lower stakes where people generally are tighter uh, and we're out of position, I'm okay with just folding. We flop Jin where we can do anything we want. Now we just turn Jin. Um, so the eights on the left, I think we can bet for value, by the way. I know it's scary, but I think we should bet for value here. It's, it's very unlikely he's got a queen or a ten. So I think that we can... Um, I think that we can bet for value. Yeah, just auto-checking. I mean, you shouldn't defend that. So I would definitely note him. And also, he, sh he, would, he would call with a four. Like, he would call with a four. He'd call with a seven. Like... He might call with ace highs. I think we have a very clear value bet on this river with ace. I know it sucks because there's like, you know, oh, what are we going to get called by? But there are worse hands that we can get called by. And we've not shown any strength, right? So why not just bet? So the seven on the turn, I'm okay with betting. I'm okay with checking. When we bet, I think going a larger size makes sense. This is okay. I'd probably go bigger just because just with our range, we want to get value with our strong hands. We want to um, we wanna just have as much fold equity as we can with our bluffs. And it's pretty good board for us. So in general, once he checks back, I'm okay. I'm okay with betting. The reason why I might check is our hand is so strong here that he just might have so many auto folds. So we might want to get him to bluff. Like, because with this hand, we block everything, right? We block a seven. We block the nut flush draw. Uh, we even block ace king, which can continue. So I'm okay with checking that specific combo. But in general, uh, you want to have a lot of bets there and uh, have big bets. No suit today, Liam. Uh, if anyone's got any questions or anything, guys, throw them out in the chat because I'll have like a little break seeing as we're halfway through the session. Queens, easy raise versus a limp. I'm okay going this size. I'm okay going slightly bigger as well because a lot of people love limp calling, so we might as well get some value. Um, I'm probably going to just see about this 100% of the time. Again, this kind of board, he's technically got more sevens, so I'm okay just betting um, one third here. Half pot against someone that's limp called is absolutely fine. Not much to say that. And you can probably tag him as a fun player. And these guys here as well. A guy limping off this, these kind of stats, like limping too much. Just, he's a fun player. 10-7, uh, easy check. Nice note. See, he's, I mean, he is probably a fun player with his, with his, with his stack. But there are spots where I don't mind over limping. Um, but yeah, because he's not playing a full stack, I'm okay with it. Ace-5, definitely a fold versus another gun on the call. Even though we're getting a good price, our hand's dominated. It's not suited. We're out of position. Just, just trash, really. Ace-5 suited will be an open. And again, like King-3 offsuit, we can raise blind on blind, right? Especially if uh, we don't have much info on this guy. But it's something that you don't want to be just snap folding, right? So, I mean, it's pretty loose, I would imagine, anyway. But... Okay, so it's borderline anyway. Um, no, sorry, that's big blind. Um, but yeah, we, we 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 can still open anyway. It's uh it's pretty it's pretty loose, but yeah, definitely want to ISO here with the ace five suited. And this guy's probably a fun player, nice and deep. All right, so the small blind calls and this guy calls as well. Pretty interesting board. So again, we've got advantage here in the overpairs. I'm okay betting this, yeah. So Paddy's going to have some pocket pairs. Right, so ignore this, this little donk bet. So Paddy's going to have some pocket pairs, but he's also going to have some Broadway cards that just fold. Um, Lixandru's just going to have all kinds of nonsense. So he might have a seven or a four or just fucking nine six of spades or something uh whenever somebody does this the easiest thing to do i think is just treat it as a check so don't think this guy's bet and now we have to raise just assume that this is a check and now we're deciding whether we want to check or bet so this would make no unless i have a specific read on somebody this would like make no difference as to whether i'm gonna raise or check or or like you know what i mean 
So I assume this is a check, and now it's on us. Are we going to check behind, or are we going to bet? Um, so I don't mind betting, I don't mind checking. So I would probably raise, I'd raise bigger than that. Like, like think about that, that's a terrible raise. Like, first of all, this is less than, I mean, it's not that bad, I guess. But because it's technically a raise, you want to make it a little bit bigger. So I'd make this probably 60 cents. Because you're making it less than a third part, well, you're making it less than a quarter pot because the pot's bigger because of his his donk lead, his his bet, even though it's barely even a bet. So you want to make this 50 or 60 at least. Because also, when you have value, right, you want to make this bigger. So think about your entire range. You, you want to increase your fold equity when you bluff in, and you want to get more value when you've got the best hand. So yeah, definitely make this bigger, but I'm okay with the raise. 6-7 suited, we can cold 4-bet this if we want. I would actually probably cold 4-bet for a couple of reasons. So... When we have a hand like 6-7 suited, um, we have coverage on different boards, right? So if we are only 4-betting ace-king, aces and kings, then when the board comes 4-5-6, those kind of middling boards, um, we... Oh yeah, shit, yeah. Actually, fair point. Didn't pay attention to his stack, just muck it. Just muck it. But it is, it is noted that we can 4-bet 6-7 suited at a, a low frequency. Just so we have that in our in our repertoire, basically. And obviously, Lix gets the fun player tag. But yeah, with the button being so short, I'm okay with the fold. Uh, also, we could have watched on fold that to see if we get to showdown. So I think you should utilize that more, guys. When you see somebody 3-bet and you want to know what they have, whether they're a regular or a fun player, like, when you see that, I think that we should just be... Um, yeah, we should just be... Just looking at more hands when we can. So King-9 suited here, we can open. Again, I'm okay with folding. Um, it's going to be close to the bottom of our range, but King-9 suited has good playability. Um, so, yeah, this is its uh, standard open. Again, it's on the bottom end of it. If you want to fold it, I'm literally okay with it. All right, Queen-9 suited, we can open here. We've got some good playability. All right, so Ace-Queen off here. This guy's a reg, by the way. Uh, I remember him from um, Felt Firefox's section. Session, I should say. But whatever his fucking name is, you know the idea. Uh, I'm okay with cold 4-bet in here. This makes a good cold 4-bet bluff. Um, so I would like to see a bluff in. If you call, I'll slap you. That's the worst thing. 4 in sometimes is okay. Folding is okay. Calling is not. Calling is literally not. I like it. Sizing-wise, again, a bit smaller. Once you 4 in, you can go 3x in position. Um, uh, 3x out of position, sorry. In about 2, 2 2.5, 2.2x in position. So a little bit big, but I'm okay with it. Uh, the queen nine, I would have been okay with c-bet and flop, just considering we block some of the nuts and we have advantage on that flop. Jack six suit, it could have been a raise pre-flop. King jack's marginal under the gun, so I'm okay with just letting it go. Uh, ten seven suited, cut off, marginal. You just instantly wanted to fold out the small blind. I can see yo Baxter, what's going on? So I, I know no one likes calling hands out the small blind or playing hands out the small blind, but sometimes you got to do it. And I'm liking that you folded threes there. That's good. So it was a marginal open anyway. Once we open marginally and we get three bet, that means we're at the bottom of our range. Ditch it. Uh, and definitely folding the ace two suited versus an open. King eight suited, maybe a defend. So deuces under the gun is pretty loose. I think at these stakes you can probably get away with it. Uh, so if we're looking at our under the gun ranges again, this is going to be a borderline hand. I literally, when I'm playing more aggressive tables, won't open any of these. I'll open like probably fives plus and none of these bottom ones here, and I won't open these or these, and I just open A-Shack off plus and fives plus, basically. So if you're on the table, especially if you've got a hood and the three bet's relatively low, I'd consider opening. King eight suit, we can defend it, even multi-weight. So, yeah. But yeah, I, I would honestly just like mock like hands like, just those kind of hands. I'd rather open Jack nine suited or Queen nine suited than uh, pocket twos. It's just got so much more playability and so much more equity post flop when your opponent hits a pair and continues in the hand, right? Kings is a pretty good hand. Okay, then by rush. Uh, so we are going to be three betting with 100% frequency here. We shouldn't really be trapping. So, okay, so obviously I talk about a theory point of view. Let's say you've got really aggro players here that three bet all the time. I could consider flatting and then, you know, letting somebody 3-bet behind. But that's pure exploit. From a theory point of view, you want to be 3-betting. 
Here, this is actually annoying because when we fall back, we're going to rep such strength that we're going to narrow their value range down a lot. So it actually kind of sucks. Uh, Queen 10 suited, I assume we ISO'd versus a limp. Definitely want to see about the flop. Um, so Kings here, we have no option but to cold fall bet. Now, our cold fall bet and range here is going to be so tight. I would literally let go of 10s, uh, ace, queen. I'd probably only cold fall bet queens, kings, aces, ace, king, and some jacks. I'd even let jacks go against higher players. Look at this guy. He's fucking tight. Like, I, literally, I, I'm in this. I, I'm seeing this spot now for the first time. I already assume he's got aces. If he sticks it in, I assume he's got aces. What's going on, Jamie? So literally, I am. This is a spot where I'm actually. You can also make this smaller. Um, where if we see a four bet, I'm hating life. But we take it down. But make it a tiny bit smaller. Yeah, yeah. Definitely went too big again. Uh, queen four. Even though we're getting a good price, there's still a play left to back. So I like the fold. Ace king on the button. So remember, guys. So three betting. Take notes, guys. Right. So when you three bet. Mainly we're going to go around three times the raise in position, around four times the raise out of position, assuming it's heads up. When you four bet in, either cold four bet in or just four bet in versus a, a, an opponent's three bet, then you want to be going around 3x out of position and 2.2x to 2.5x in position. You really don't need to make it big in position because you get to realize your equity and you're putting them in a tough spot because they're out of position anyway. So four betting in position is lovely because they just, they're put in the cage. They can't really do anything without a good hand unless you just want to rip it in. Ace three suited, easy open, ace king off, easy three bet. Also, something I will say, so we have a four bet stat here uh, in 300 hands. Four betting stats can be wild without literally thousands of hands. Even then, like, look at this. This is 19% four bet, like from Chris, in 772 hands. That is huge. That is ridiculous. Um, so I wouldn't trust that stat unless you have loads and loads of info or if it's 100% 4 bet in like 500 hands. And even then it could just be varying. So be careful guys with 4 bet stats. Aces and somebody is 6x'd. Oh my god. Fucking Christmas. So here we want to take our time, have a quick wank and then 3 bet. That is the, the strategy here. Obviously tag him as a fish because he's a goon. So 3 bet in size, I probably still go a little bigger. I know we've got aces and it's a huge raise, but I still am okay going about 3x blind on blind. Just because we want to get as much money in as we can because he's 6x. So he's probably going to have a good hand, right? Or like something that he can continue with. Um, a flop's very good for us. You can have some king queens. You shouldn't really have kings or queens. You should never dunk this. So this guy you can tag as a whale because his line is already so retarded. First of all, 6xing pre. Second of all, leading this flop. Yeah, definitely raise. You just want to get more money in the pot, right? If he's bluffing and he folds a bluff, fine. I can maybe get behind a call, but we just have such advantage. I'm okay raising. And we can actually go smaller than this because the SPR is a lot smaller now, so it's easier to get the money money in, but I'm okay with it. And he just folds. The guy is, the guy is absolute whalier. Right, this is actually a fun spot. We can 4-bet this. As long as we're, as long as we're not folding, uh, I don't hate 4-betting because... But it's kind of weird because if we fall back, we're getting a really good price. Maybe calling is just best. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely a bug, I asked him. So. Looking big in that tank top. Sun's out, gun's out, bro. It's so fucking hot in this room. I've not slept more than five hours for the past, like, four days. What are you doing? Seven, eight suited, Chris. We're going to have words. Seven, eight suited under the gun. Fucking hell, I prefer this to aces. And he's folding. You make me sick. Uh, excellent seabet strategy from this guy um, with the min raise. Uh, with the min bet. Obviously, that's terrible. It's actually a dumb spot, right? I'm actually glad he raised because I just want to fold, but we're getting 12 to 1, so we kind of can't. But, yeah, watch on fold. Lovely. This is what we want to see. Oh, right. Okay. I guess not. I guess I'll go fuck myself, Chris, yeah? Fucking bang out of order, this guy. Alright, so Ace Jack on the button versus... I mean, this is kind of sketch because of his stack size. You didn't pay attention to that, did you? I mean, it's okay. Actually, 18 bigs. You can 3-bet, get it in. We're against the same hand. So that's fine. Kind of want to see you lose for folding 7-8 uh, folding suit. Never mind. Uh, but yeah, it's okay versus the stack size. At first, I thought it was bad, but then I thought, no, 3-bet calling off is fine. Uh, this will be a 3-bet. I'm pretty sure King-Queen suit is going to be a 3-bet from any position. We're not going to call here with any hands, so we're going to 3-bet. Um, and we're a little bit deeper, which is uh, which is fine. 
And we got Ace King. We got a nice squeeze spot. So on the right hand side, I want to see this about 15 big blinds at least. Versus a 3x and a call. Uh, Okie dokie. So we turn two pair now with the King Queen. And yeah, I'm okay with just bet, bet, betting. Just with loads of hands, especially with it being a club as well. We can turn some club draws with like 7 8 suited, jack 10 suited, like ace jack of clubs, ace 10 of clubs that we want to barrel again. So I definitely like barreling again. I'm okay with the size and with the ace king. Definitely a squeeze. If you don't squeeze her, you need to quit poker. And now we have just a mess, but ace king out of position in a three bet part is always mess. Honestly, there's so much different things you can do on this board. You could just blast this and end up calling off. Because we, we still have advantages in the over pairs, right? He shouldn't technically have threes, fours, or fives, even though we probably will. He can definitely have six, seven suited. I mean, yeah. And now, now we just give up on this turn. But I'm okay with C-betting. I'm okay with check calling. Honestly, against a fun player, I'm probably just checking. It's not the worst of hands to... Uh, worst of rivers to bluff, but I prefer it when we don't have the ace of diamonds just in case he's he has a hand like ace eight of diamonds or something um, That we just got auto folds on I, I think I'm probably just checking here, but I haven't seen you bluff a lot of rivers So I'm glad to see you bluff. I just don't think this is the best hand to do it with um, And we get called by his five against 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 fun players. Just don't do it like The guy called you with a pair of fucking fives man but that does mean that we get to go a lot wider for value. What's the first thing you want to do? Get that tag out, bro. Change that tag from a fun player to a station. And note him. To be fair, I mean, it's not like the worst call ever. You're not really repping that much. But you still want to be noting that that's exactly what he's done. He should have 3-bet pre. His call pre-flop once, uh, once you... It's not the worst. He, he unblocks bluffs. Maybe because it's four to a straight as well, are you really gonna go that big with like a hand like um with a hand like nines or even aces? This isn't even a bad session, man. You only lost like a couple of buy-in. If you get really upset at these kind of uh these kind of these kind of sessions, then you need to just get a stronger mental game. Just because you've only lost a couple of buy-ins here, and most of the spots have been standard. Jack 10 suited, one of three bet here, King Jack, definitely an open. Okay, so because I've been going off these bluff the spot ranges, um, pretty much don't have many calling hands. Just generally three bet our folding. It does have what we should um, against the cutoff. We can just three bet a lot more. But these are what you can call versus those positions. So ten jack suited is a pure call versus early positions. So if you're having a calling range, calling is fine. Also, if the the blinds have fun players in, I prefer a call. But in general, I'm just going to three bet this. Uh, especially if they've got a low four. He's got a relatively higher four bet, so maybe get behind a call more often. But yeah, just in general, I think I want to uh, want a three bet hat. Um, and yeah, because we also knock the blind out of the pot as well, right? And then it's just... This, this, this play's okay multi-way, but against like a fun player in the big blind, I definitely want to call, but um, I think general... If there's regs in the big blind, you want a three bet. So, yeah. The YouTube is funny, isn't it, Teddy? Make sure you go check it out, guys. My latest video on YouTube. Or Instagram. Either or. You need to understand. Everything you do at a poker table. All right, this sucks balls. This is just going to be a pure call. His sizing's terrible, so he's either a bad reg or a fish. You should make that way bigger. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if he's got a very strong hand here, to be honest, but... Uh, ace queen offsuit, I can I I I could get behind folding. Like ace queen offsuit, I would fold, even versus a small size. We have a fist pump caller. I see no reason to raise. He still has advantages in the over pairs. He can have aces, kings, jacks. From these positions, I don't like this raise. If it's like button versus cut off, if it's like even middle position versus like cut off, blind versus blind stuff like that, definitely want to be raising this. Here, I think it's just too thin. What do you do when you get shoved on? I think we just I think we just call air versus these positions. So this has been fun. So let's let's decide what we think you need to improve on. Size ins only slightly. I don't think there's many massive mistakes. Um, C betting definitely when it comes to C betting on boards that aren't good for your range. Don't just C bet one third on every single board. Make sure you you're picking boards that are good for your range. Dry boards. When it's a, a more wet board, we want to check back more often, but we want to get bigger sometimes. Uh, thanks, AJ. Um, 
So yeah, four bet sizings definitely. But again, you're not losing too much EV there because it, it weren't like they were actually t absolutely terrible. I liked your four bet bluffs with the ace queen. Obviously, your four bets for value with standard kings and stuff. Um, I would say maybe value suit connectors a little bit more, but probably not as much as I do. Um, and just don't fold too much when you get to the small blind. Like don't insta fold because you've got a hand that's not that great. Uh, in the small blind, like a six off suit, for example, that you folded because it's definitely a raise blind versus blind. Um, but yeah, honestly, not that many huge errors.